Hello, welcome to Mimi Craft, your home for all things creative and DIY on a budget. I make all the mistakes so you don't have to. It's so good to have you back. If you see something that you enjoy today, don't forget to hit the like button, share with friends and family, and leave me a comment. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so today. My uploading has been a little bit irregular, so be sure to hit that little bell so that you know every time I upload a video. I sure hope you enjoyed today's project. I must have made it and taken it apart at least 10 times. Thought that it was gonna be my cause of death, but on that note, let's get started. Need one box of tumbling tower blocks. Choose 50 that are the same size. Using wood glue, glue together 14 sets of three lengthwise. Glue a set of eight the same way and reinforce with popsicle sticks. It should take you three popsicle sticks to do it. the seams with wood filler. This little gadget is actually meant for icing a cake and I bought it at the Dollar Tree. What I'm doing here is turning all of these right side up. When you glue these together the bottom side will be the flattest so you want to turn that side up and have that be the front of your piece. When the wood filler is dry, using protective equipment, of course, sand all of your pieces completely smooth. Next, paint all sides except the back, and I recommend using chalk paint. I did black for this project. I'm using Waverly. Use matte Mod Podge to seal all of your painted pieces. Cut a piece of poster board 19 inches wide by 4.5 inches tall. 4.5 is a very close measurement. If you want to give yourself a little bit of room for mistakes, make it 5 inches and then you can cut it down later. You want to draw 45 degree angles on each end parallel and then trim both ends and this will be the template for your project. You need two flexible cutting mats from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut them both at the same time so that they're exactly the same. And what we're doing is cutting off the curved edge because we're going to be gluing them together. So I like to use a utility knife for this. And I usually score it first and then off camera um, cut it a bunch more times till it's all the way through, like that. Next, I overlap them in the middle. And because I'm using a grid, I can get them really accurate. I like to tape everything down because these slide all over the place. 
So I tape it all down and then I'm gonna use hot glue to join the pieces together. Do just a little bit at a time so the hot glue doesn't dry. Make sure you remove any excess hot glue with your finger while it's still warm. I let it cool for about two seconds so I don't burn myself and then I'm able to rub it off. I use an old kitchen knife to remove excess glue that I wasn't able to rub off while it was still warm. Find the middle of your template and then place the middle of the template directly over the seam. This will be hidden in the project, so don't worry about it. Cut it out with a craft knife or a utility knife. I think that gives you the smoothest cut compared to scissors. And that's what it's gonna look like. Paint both sides of this with the chalk paint that you chose. Make sure you paint the edges so that you get a really nice finished look. Seal the edges with matte Mod Podge. This is the wrong side, so I'm not coming very far down from the edge. When you get to the right side, you're gonna to wanna to seal about three quarters of an inch on the top and the bottom. Next, we're gonna be doing some foiling. This is Dollar Tree's version of gold foil, and I'm uh, using air quotes because it's just plastic. Um, gloss Mod Podge, a brush, tweezers are probably helpful, and a knife. The way this stuff comes, you're gonna have to use something to pull it out. It says it's flakes, it actually is sheets all rolled up together, so it's really a pain to undo, and you wanna try to get the biggest possible pieces, otherwise it will take you the rest of your life to do this. I recommend that you use a better quality product of foil from let's say Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Amazon or something, because um, this stuff was pretty miserable to work with. But I wanted to try the Dollar Tree's version. By the way, I used about a jar and a half of this stuff. I find it, found that if I used little scissors to make rectangles and squares and triangles, it was easier to piece things together. But do whatever you want, you're gonna be doing a lot of overlapping. So what you do is you brush on the Mod Podge. Now this is on the wrong side of the project. Then you place your foil on, make sure it goes all the way to and even over the edge. And then take some Mod Podge to go over the top. So the bottom Mod Podge is your glue, the top Mod Podge is your sealer. Just kinda of watch as, you go, as I go along and you'll get the rhythm of this. It's, this could be pretty time consuming and uh, it's gonna take some perseverance, but I know you can do it. This would be the perfect time to put on a podcast. That's what I do when I do these, otherwise uh, it gets kind of boring. Mm -hmm. 
When all the black is covered, then seal the whole thing with some more of that gloss Mod Podge and then let it dry real thoroughly. I don't think I showed on camera that once you're done, trim all the excess foil off the edges. On the black side, take your eight black piece and glue it to the upper right. The upper right corner of your blocks will line up with the side. The upper left corner will line up with the slant. You're going to be using hot glue to place this. I apologize for the condition of this piece. I uh, kind of Frankensteined a bunch of clips together because I took this apart, put it back together so many times. Quickly with your hot glue because it cools off so fast you want a really good bond. So press down and hold it until it cools. Also not shown here is that the popsicle side is the side that should be facing up. Sounds counterintuitive. Just hang in there, you'll see in a minute. Add your holder now. This is a D-ring holder that I purchased at Menards. Rotate the piece counterclockwise and attach at the bottom as you see on screen. You're gonna wanna glue it very slowly and clip it as you go or hold it down as you go so that the glue doesn't dry too quickly. Hold it down till it's cool. There's no foil showing on this shot because, well, you know, Frankenstein. At this point, you're going to need to add a block to the bottom of the back of your project. It's going to be on the same side as the D-ring. This will cause it to hang evenly on the wall. On the front of your project with the pencil, mark the center line. You will be putting one three block set on either side of that line. This will help you to keep things straight. With hot glue, you will glue each of the three block sets from the center to the back. Make sure you heat, hold each one of these down very firmly until they're completely cool or they will pop off. I had a lot of trouble with these popping off. I also had trouble with glue peeling. So hang in there. You're gonna see the project look rough in a few places. I had to do a lot of touching up on this one. Not glue peeling, paint peeling. Ugh. Please ignore the battery pack in the back. That is the wrong spot to put it. Time for last touch-ups before we put the lights in. This is where the battery pack for the fairy lights is going to be glued in. I bought these fairy lights at five below. There it is placed and then you glue it in with hot glue. Next I took a Mod Podge bottle just as a template. I wrapped half of the fairy lights around that and then tied them off with a little piece of floral wire that I bought at Dollar Tree. That's what it looks like. If it doesn't stay in place, you can tack it down with hot glue. It won't hurt the lights at all. Feed the other half of the light strands through the top. These are the top lights already wrapped. This is a nasty hot glue gun. And this is how I secured the lights in place. You can see all the touch-ups I haven't done yet.
And here it is. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ta-da! I'm so happy with how this turned out. It's really pretty in real life. And I hope all the times that I made this and tore this apart will cause you to be able to do it in one try. Let me know how it goes for you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this project. Is this something you think you'd like to do? Until the next one, bye.